What's up everybody, how's it going? So today I am joined by two very special guests, Nimit and David. They are the CEOs, or the two co-founders of Full Stack Academy, the coding bootcamp that I attended. And we're here today to chat with them about how they built Full Stack Academy into like, one of the best coding boot camps in the country. So excited to be here. It's so excited to be on, on, on your channel. So how about you start by kind of telling us about who you are, how you got together, how you started Full Stack. So one thing I love to tell people is that Nimit and I, just this year, crossed what I call our relationship half-life. Okay. That we've now known each other and worked together longer than we haven't known each other. So we met when we were 18 years old on the first day of college. The first thing I said to Nimit, he had just given a speech for some freshman club. And the first thing I asked him was, what operating system do you run? And I remember he looked at me like, you're kind of a weirdo. And he said, I run Linux. I was like, we're going to be friends. <laughs> so we've been friends since freshman year of college. We've done a lot of projects together. In 2012, Nimit was graduating from Wharton from business school. And we just started hanging out and saying, you know, what's next? What do we really want to work on? And we had a few things in the hopper that we really liked. So we really liked education. Mm -hmm. We really liked coding. We really liked um, the idea of, like coding for us is like our power animal. It's like, I feel like it's, it makes me feel so powerful in the world. Right. And can we share that feeling with others? So that was kind of the genesis of the ideas that we were exploring. But the thing that's interesting is that when you founded Full Stack Academy in 2012, there were no other coding boot camps. Or maybe there was like one super There was a couple, yeah. yeah. But so you, you were kind of at the inception of this field, which is now gigantic, at least in the United States and even globally. So I've actually been thinking about what made boot camps possible. You're right, it was a it was almost a what I call like a Cambrian explosion okay. of this idea. It was crazy because like early on, you don't know like what do you teach? What's the format? What kind of students are you looking for, right? All that stuff was being explored. And it was interesting and you know, in hindsight, all the ideas that were bad died off. And so we just think this is the way it's done, right? But we were all exploring those things uh, early on. I think the thing that really resonated with us was that we had both been engineering managers, VPs of engineering, CTOs, and we knew what we wanted to hire. Okay. And we knew if we worked backwards from there, we wouldn't go too far off track. Gotcha, gotcha. And so I guess this brings me to the next question, which a lot of people, especially some of my viewers have been asking, how do you come up with the curriculum for Full Stack Academy? How do you know that it's one of the best curriculums out there? Do you update it frequently? We do update it frequently. In fact, the way we came up with it very early on was, I'm speaking for David, but David was one of the early, one of the early pioneers of being a Ruby programmer, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this whole bootcamp space actually started with Ruby on Rails is kind of like the the one you know the the wave that that the bootcamp industry latched onto. I remember. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so we also started our very first class on Ruby on Rails, but we quickly found out that you know if you're going to create somebody who is extremely productive in this short amount of time, like 13 to 17 weeks, then you really can't let them leave without being great at JavaScript. Right. Right. And so what happens in the Ruby boot camps is that you. You do Ruby for about eight weeks, and then you take this like crazy 90 degree turn to JavaScript where everything is crazy and God forbid, you need to use parentheses to execute functions. Right. And like, you know, there's all kinds of little, little things that, that for a beginner it takes time to, um, to get a hold of. And so we realized that the whole full stack JavaScript ecosystem, which was actually just coming up around the time that we started uh, full stack was really the right vehicle to latch onto, and so very early on, we rewrote uh, our whole curriculum to full stack JavaScript. I think that that whole attitude and that ethic of like being unforgiving about updating our technologies when we think it's the right move for the market kind of kept us relevant, kept us you know something that was exciting for students. Yeah, and and so, it's, it's interesting because yeah. like when I was applying to coding boot camps, I remember I saw a lot of them were Ruby. And it was at a time where even the people I knew who were into programming were telling me, yeah, Ruby sounds like a good thing. Whereas now, three years after I graduated, two and a half years, Ruby on Rails would be like, it seems like it would not be a good idea to teach only Ruby on Rails or focus purely or yeah. focus mostly on that. Yeah. What happens today in the Ruby boot camps is that they end up trying to teach you both things early right. on, right? And I think the problem is that you end up graduating you know, kind of, I mean, maybe not everybody, I, there may be some people who do very well, but course, like yeah. mostly you end up graduating as a jack of both things rather than being like really good at something. Yeah. And you know, we really think that in your early on in your career, it's better to be vertically deep and be really good at one stack rather than 
trying to get like a little taste of every single stack out there and not be hireable in any of them. Yeah. The thing I always tell employers is that they, they said, you only teach them JavaScript. Well, I need people in Java, Python, Go, Ruby, or you know, any, any, any backend. Any backend. Yeah. And what I tell them is that test that they're deep in JavaScript and then extrapolate that they can get deep in something else. I'm always skeptical of just teaching tools because the tools change, but the ideas and the fundamentals are, these, even computer science, they, they often change, but they're much more eternal. And so like, you look at something like React. React, we were very early in the React curricula, and now it's it's become one of the most popular I mean, frameworks of all time. It's almost like its own ecosystem. Right, it is. I would, I would argue that it is it, at this point. It is its, its own world, right? Like there are people who might say that I'm a React developer, not just a, even a JavaScript developer. But if we look at the things that we really liked about React, you know, functional programming, component-based design, how do we make sure that students are getting those things as well as you know, I know what props are, right? right. And so we look at the trends because we want to, we want students to know what's current. We're not like an institution where we're afraid of industry. We want to engage deeply with industry. And then we also say like, why is industry moving here? And can we extrapolate the fundamentals and then bring those into the curricula? So that's, that's our kind of our two guiding principles of what curricula we want to update and how we update it. Gotcha. And I really like one of the things that you used to tell us students at Full Stack is that you really are teaching us how to learn programming, right? You're giving us the tools to then teach ourselves whatever else we might need to learn because that's what coding is at the end of the day, right? You are never going to learn all of coding and then be done. You're going to no. forever be teaching yourself new technologies and all that. I think we're like any other trade. We're always trying to improve our tools, improve our thinking, improve our collaboration methodologies. So there's no there's no end to it. I think that's, that's the fun of it is that, right. you know, how we did programming on front-end websites, even just 10 years ago, I mean, when we were first making websites, jQuery was the invention. And everyone was like, wow, finally a tool that helps us solve cross-browser issues, right? And then you, you, we've kept going, like we kept solving different problems. And then in that process of solving those problems, finding deeper and deeper ways to think about the problems that we're solving. Right. So one question that I get asked a lot is how do employers, especially big tech companies like Google, how do they perceive coding bootcamp grads? What do you think about that? Google tells us they would never hire a bootcamp grad. <laughs> no. Uh, what operating system do you run? When we started Full Stack, it, the idea that you could take someone in an immersive environment for three to four months and graduate somebody who was employable was a very new idea for the, the kind of the established tech uh, employment world, right? right? Someone like Google would not even have thought about hiring a bootcamp grad in 2013 when we just launched. Whereas last year, Google was one of our most active employers, uh, yeah. one of our top three active employers on Full Stack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is crazy. And I think that they, so now we see that at these large companies like Google, Facebook, et cetera, Amazon, that, Microsoft, Amazon Google, Microsoft, yeah. that like bootcamp hiring has become one of their standard channels of hiring yeah. compared to before it was like, oh, you know, you're a bootcamper. What does that even mean? Like, you know, can you prove yourself? And, and I'll tell you why. Like the core thing that getting a computer science degree gives you, it tells the market that, that one, you are able to succeed at something difficult, right? So you graduate from a CS degree, you're able to succeed at something. Two, you've done computer science for a while, so it, it like proves to you, uh, sorry, it proves to the market that you are passionate about working on computers. And that three, if you have a good GPA, it, it shows that you can be successful at kind of working as a team player, like, it, it, like you know, following like directions, all that stuff. And right. so that's what an undergrad does for you. Um, boot camps have slowly become that, you know, been able to prove those checkpoints as well. Yeah. So it's like, if you have great projects coming out of a boot camp, if you've been able to succeed out of a difficult boot camp for this three to four month period and it's full time, especially for people who are maybe in their late twenties and they're starting to have families, like you, you, you're showing the passion. Yeah. Uh, that's you're showing an empl employer that you quit your previous job. You're like super committed to it and be like, you already have your history from the past as well. Like if you've been to a good undergrad, if, you, if you've had a great job before that, all that kind of works to work for you. So I think employers are just recognizing that, uh, you know, all these things make for possibly good employees. Yeah. And employers are also really thinking cohesively around how do we increase our pipeline, not only from just a number standpoint, but from a diversity standpoint, how do we bring new ideas in? Right. And, you know, if you only look at the computer science pipeline, you have to deal with all of the kind of diversity challenges in that pipeline, right? So one thing boot camps have really done that's powerful is engage different different groups. So for example, our Grace Hopper program, we've in 2018 we graduated as many women as we graduated men. 
Right. right. So that's that's very rare for any And also program. also low income people. Yeah. Right. It's... That that's I think one of the things that I think is very impressive about cutting boot camps is that through certain special programs like your web development fellowship or maybe income share agreements like you have with Grace Hopper, you have you make coding accessible to people with low income or few resources. The income share agreement model not only works to make it more accessible for someone who's at a lower income, but it also reduces the risk. It, it reduces this feeling that, you know, I'm putting my entire career at risk, right? Because you, um, I mean, I guess you're already, you do have to quit your job, but if you have to pay fifteen to $20,000 on top of that, like it creates this massive mental barrier. And I right. think that the income share agreement, you know, removes this barrier, which is why at the Grace Hopper program, like David mentioned, we are, we've been able to, you know, with the help of the Grace Hopper program, we've been able to have a 50-50 male-female ratio coming out of full stack without changing anything about our admission standards, outcomes, you know, anything else or difficulty of program. Right. And also the fact that coding boot camps are this condensed thing in just a few months means also less risk for the individual. They don't have to say, oh, I have to put four years of my life on pause yeah. because Time. I can put three months. Speed is its own quality, we say, right? Yeah. yeah. So speed is fundamental to why this model has succeeded at all. So what advice or tips would you give to someone who's either considering going to a coding boot camp or maybe in the middle of a coding boot camp right now? One thing I love to, to tell prospective students is to really know yourself before you, you jump in. Learning programming is really as the most accessible thing right now that you can do online. A lot of places to learn kind of about coding, kind of the introductory ideas. And for them to invest that time up front to put, a, put their little bit of elbow grease into, can I do this myself? We want students who have explored a little bit of the space themselves and know this is for them. I think the other thing is that it's um, what operating system do you run? The second tip that I would give to you if you're either at a boot camp or thinking about applying to a boot camp is to subscribe to Clement's channel. Yeah. Um, that's very important because it's one of our type criteria while we're assessing people in the full second admissions process. Right. The third tip uh, that I would give is to realize that boot camps are like rocket launchers, but you are the rocket and you are the fuel in the rocket launcher. And so the more that you bring to us, the more that we can help you explode out and to succeed after you get out. And this is very important because a lot of students I see, they read about all the success stories of people and they think that we're like a oven. Like you put in some batter and then you just come out a cake. That's not the right mental model. Like as soon as you commit yourself to doing a, a boot camp, get to work, right? Yeah. Like prep yourself like crazy. There's so many resources out online right now. Go above and beyond. Um, even when you actually arrive at boot camp, you'll find that you're in this awesome virtuous cycle of, hey, like you're the one that everybody's asking questions to. You're the one that everyone points to when there's something difficult going on, when there's a difficult problem. And because of that virtuous cycle, you're gonna get better and better and better. And when you graduate, you're gonna be one of those many people who come out of full stack and go to Google. That's the, that's the advice that I give always people is like, yeah. the more you put into it, the more you will get out. It's, yeah. it's that simple, but it's also something that you have to sort of just do, right? And it's hard when you're actually doing it. Yeah, I, I think of it yeah, as a force multiplier, right? It's like you can dig with a hand shovel or you put a long stick on it, you can dig a lot more, a lot easier. So it's like the, the more leverage you can apply, we can help you apply that leverage. I think that's a four C's, have great coaching, have great content they're working through, have a great community, and have a great way to commit to it. And everything they put in, they get out, you know, yeah. many times over. And I'll add a fifth C, get a great career out of it. Career, oh, yes. Look at that. C for Clement, C for career. <laughs> That's the sixth, the sixth C, C, you got Clement. it. <laughs> awesome, I think this was super valuable advice and insight. Do you have any last words for anybody who wants to know more maybe about full stack or? What operating system do you run? Smash that like button. I think though, the one thing I always love to tell prospective students is we've been around for seven years, but we're still a very small organization. And Nimit and I still care very deeply about what happens day to day. And I think that that's true for us and it's true for a lot of the other bootcamps out there, which I yeah. think is a unique thing in education that you could email the CEO and 
either one of us and we're happy to yeah. respond to you and talk to you. So right. if you're interested in exploring a bootcamp, reach out, you know, like talk to talk to alumni, talk to instructors, talk to the staff there. It truly is one of the pleasures of my life to work with really passionate, smart people like yourself, right? And then to see to see all these students blossom and in their careers and I mean selfishly, I think I heard this phrase better, but it's like I want to live in that glorious future that we're all building together. And the more people we can train to help build that future, the more the better all our lives will be. So that's it's really what we love doing and we'd love to talk to people about it. And if you're we know it's a big commitment, but if you're thinking about it, we'd love to get in there and talk to you about it. Right. And I would highly recommend Full Stack. Like I've said publicly online, uh, Full Stack was probably one of the, if not the best investments I made in my life. If you just look at what it's brought me, again, it wasn't handed to me on a silver platter. I, I, I give credit where credit is due, but I also take some of, cre of the credit for having put in the work and all that. But it is one of the best investments, if not the best one I've made in my life. Well, and that, also, that means a lot to us. I mean, really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And also, uh, one of the great things about Full Stack is that if you do attend Full Stack, you get Algo Expert for free, uh, which if you're going to be preparing for coding interviews afterwards, you're definitely going to want. But if you don't go to Full Stack, you can buy it right now at a discount by using the promo code CLEM, C L E M. I would just want to second the recommendation for Algo Expert because I think, like, getting a job is actually surprisingly it's quite different from being a good developer right right getting a job is really just about mastering those like algorithm skills and especially whiteboard algorithm skills and i think no better platform than algorithm expert to help you do that thank you that's gonna be it for this video i really hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you found nimit and david's advice and tips and everything really insightful let me know what you thought about it in the comments and as always smash the like button and i'll see you in the next video do it uh, no, I can synchronize. <laughs> the whole like, clapping thing doesn't actually problem. do anything. <laughs> so, they, um, I'll just say, uh... <laughs> Will you stop me? <laughs> okay, so... Smash that like button. What operating system do you run?